we begin with what everybody's talking about, a hot stretch of summer-like weather around here, closing some schools today. Detroit Public Schools released three hours early again tomorrow. Yeah, so the question is, could we see some storms tomorrow? Let's check in now with Rich Luderman for our first look at our forecast, Rich. Hey there, Taryn and Dave. We will likely see a couple of storms tomorrow, but today, another cooker with a official high of 89 degrees. Here's the record for today, 99, set way back in 1954. So we've only reached 90 degrees officially twice this spring and summer season. On average, we get up close to 90, 12 days, but uh, we're well short of that this year. How about the current region? Readings 88 for us, 90 in Lansing, and for Mount Pleasant, Grand Rapids, also 90 degrees. Notice what's on radar. A couple of thunder showers popping up uh, out around Jackson, down across Hillsdale County. One or two of those showers may come our way. Right now, it's warm up at the Sioux Locks. 87 degrees up there. For us, we'll get down to 71. Again, a stray shower chance. Most of us stay dry, but tomorrow brings a better chance for spotty storms. Then, a much cooler pattern shapes up heading into to the weekend. Taryn and Dave will check it for you coming up in 15. All right, thank you, Rich. An urgent manhunt today for an alleged killer accused of shooting his own mother. She was found shot to death in Inkster on Monday. Fox 2's Jessica Dubnak joining us live with the details. And uh, Jessica, they're still looking for him. Absolutely, Taryn and Dave. I just checked in with uh, investigators within the last hour, and they tell me that 25 year old Joshua Hill, he is still on the run. Now, it is possible that he is still armed, but investigators definitely say he's dangerous. These incidents impact a neighborhood beyond belief. People are rattled. People are concerned. The chief is right. This Inkster Street on edge, a manhunt for a suspected murderer, 25-year-old Joshua Hill. I didn't probably sleep two and a half hours. <laughs> you don't know if Josh is coming back. Josh is still not caught. Is he in the house next door? Did he come back when we were all sleeping? Is he in one of these empty houses? Teresa McNay lives right next door to the murder scene, a home off Glenwood near Middlebelt. Hill's mother, a 64-year-old, was found dead Monday afternoon, shot multiple times. We've known the family for 28, 29 years now. <laughs> Really, really good people. I'm shocked. I am seriously shocked. Teresa describes the family as kind, church going, and normal, but she says Joshua Hill stuck out. But their son Josh definitely had some mental issues. Um, you know, he uh, kept to himself over there in two and a half years. He never spoke to anybody on this block. Um, so you knew something was a little odd? Definitely. Clearly, anybody that has the wherewithal to shoot their own mother is a danger to the community. Michigan State Police detectives are leading the case and initially put out to the public two vehicles Hill could be in. As of Tuesday afternoon, it's unclear what vehicle, if any, he's now associated with. It's, it's uh, urgent that anybody that knows his whereabouts contact us. I hope the family can make it through this. I'm praying for them. Just a tough situation all the way around. Family was back out at the house earlier today. They were just too upset to talk with us, as you can imagine. Now, the Inkster Police Chief, who you heard from in this story, they're working in, in conjunction with Michigan State Police investigators. He says very confident that these investigators will find Hill and bring him into custody. And a message to Hill, if he's watching, just turn yourself in. That's from the chief. Reporting live, Jessica Dupnak, Fox 2 News. Jessica, thank you. An apartment complex in Van Buren Township is making news for the second time in less than a month. This time, a fire has displaced several people who are living there. It happened this morning at the Waverly on the Lakes apartments. At least 12 units were damaged in the fire. We're told a firewall, though, helped stop the flames from spreading even further. No injuries and no known cause yet. This is the same place, just feet from where a jet crashed last month during the Thunder Over Michigan air show. Outgoing Warren Mayor Jim Fouts has lost what could be his last chance at getting a fifth term in office. A federal judge has dismissed the lawsuit Fouts filed against Warren City Council. Back in 2020, Warren voters approved new term limits on the mayor's office. Fouts argued his civil rights were violated and asked the court to decertify the election and put him back on the ballot. Warren voters will choose a new mayor in November's general election. And speaking of elections, another name is being added to the list of potential candidates for governor in 2026. And if you've ever had a Michigan driver's license, you'll probably recognize the name. Tim Skubik has the report you are seeing first on Fox 2. 
How can you miss her name? It's plastered everywhere on every Secretary of State office and every piece of stationery that comes out of her office, the office of Jocelyn Benson. When U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow announced that she would retire, lots of folks thought that Ms. Benson would run for that seat. But last March, when she said she would not, the speculation then turned to the possibility of her running for governor. In fact, there were reports last December, eight months ago, that she privately was telling close friends she indeed would run for governor. But when it came to the news media, Ms. Benson has been playing cat and mouse on wanting to be governor. So when she showed up at the governor's speech last week in our town, it was time to nail down this story with a backdoor approach to her possible bid for governor. Say to me you do not want to run for governor. I have not said that. <laughs> to ask you to tell um, me that. Oh, I, why would I say that? <laughs> because it's not true. And as you were about to hear, she is interested, but she faces some stiff opposition. For example, the lieutenant governor, the Detroit mayor, the Genesee County sheriff, and an Oakland County state senator are all also looking at running for governor. And here for the first time, Ms. Benson confesses she's looking too. I'm looking at running for governor in the future. A lot of people talk to me about it. I mean, I have, I, I go to many events and people come up to me and ask me to run, encourage me to run, and it is something that I'll look at closely with my family. But first things first, she needs to run a trouble-free 2024 election, and if she does not, that could damage her bid to be governor. She makes that very clear while making this promise about her decision. Will you call me first when you make the decision? How about that? I will call you first when I make the decision, but it will not be until after the 2024 election cycle. That's a deal. In Lansing, Tim Skubik, Fox 2 News. Can you believe it? Two days to go until the Lions kick off the new season against the Super Bowl champs in Kansas City. And we know it's so much buzz around this team. Fox 2 Sports Director Dan Miller here spoke one-on-one -on -one with the team owner, Sheila Hamm, about why these are not the same old Lions. Yeah, and that's the idea, guys. As the season opener gets closer, it was great to have a chance to sit down with her today. This new regime, which has people very optimistic about the team, was a byproduct of her vision. They've rebuilt the roster and the culture within the organization under her watch. Those early days as she, Rod Wood, Mike Disner, and ultimately Chris Spielman put things together was one of the topics we covered today. When I think all the way back, when we didn't have a general manager, we didn't have a coach, and then our quarterback decides he wants to be traded, it was, you know, okay, I guess we can do this. <laughs> this is really ground zero. <laughs> but in a way, it was a great opportunity to really start over. And we worked very hard, as you know, well know. And when we found Brad and Dan, you know, and all four of us agreed these were our guys, that was, that was something. And um, we were hoping that they would work well together, which of course has worked out beautifully. I mean, a bit of an arranged marriage for sure, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so you never really know, but we were pretty sure this was gonna work and they, they work so well together. It's just actually a joy to, to watch them. Having a vision is one thing, seeing it come together is another. We talked about the road ahead, but also what had to change with the team before they could find success. Our entire conversation with Sheila Hamp will air this evening on Fox 2 News at 10 o'clock. And there are a lot of layers to this, and it starts with being honest about where you are as an organization. And Sheila Hamp and the Lions front office did that before they hired anybody, and that's a big part of what's allowed them to start moving in the right direction. Still a lot of work to be done, but you get the sense for the first time in a long time the right pieces are in place. Mm -hmm all things we'll see in our discussion later tonight. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, things have changed a lot in the past where they reconfigured, but this one just seems to be, like she said, an arranged marriage that is working. No, and that's a great point because there have been regimes in the past where you felt like there was a little bit of success, but it didn't feel like it had staying power. This time they decided they were going to do it a different way. They weren't going to try to piecemeal it together. They were going to take this thing down to the studs and rebuild it, and that's what they did. And that's one of the things that we talked about yeah. was whether or not that was daunting, thinking about how long that might take yeah, and sure. does everybody have the patience for it, you'll hear that in the discussion tonight. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you, it. You get the sense publicly that people want to play for the Detroit Lions, especially the head coach there too as well. I think we'll, the look they got at Dan Campbell last year on Hard Knocks gave a lot of people an idea of what's happening here in Detroit and that a lot of people said these are not the same old Lions right. and that's something to your point I think people want to be a part of. Perfect. Looking forward to your report tonight. Thanks okay, Dan. Guys, thank you.